SCTV will not be seen tonight. Just wanted to give you something to gossip about. But we'll return next week at its regular time. Now, a special Late Night with David Letterman. February 4th, 1983, a date that will live forever in history. Tonight is the gala one-year anniversary special of Late Night with David Letterman. A red-letter day for those of us in the industry. And by the industry, of course, I mean the business. And for sentimental Americans everywhere. The stock market enjoyed its highest day of trading ever. The international press is out in force along with the paparazzi. And New York is literally buzzing over the list of celebrities who are going to be arriving any time now for what promises to be the party to end all parties. I'm Army Archer, the voice of Hollywood and friend of the stars, and I've flown in from the coast especially for this event. The limousines have been arriving all day, chock full of many of the marvelous stars from the show. And here's one of them right now. He's none other than the biggest star of late night, Captain Haggerty. And good to see you. Lovely Howard Taylor is arriving now with his date, one of the late night players, Mary Margaret Bannon. And it looks to me that they're quite an item both on and off the show. And familiar to the late night viewers, the three-time winner and undefeated champion of elevator races, Clara McAllister. And the rock superstar, the boss himself, Bruce Springsteen, looking very well. And of course, the president of Melman Productions, Larry Bud Melman, and his son, the multi-talented, Mr. Troy Chipper Melman. Well, last night must have been a very, very touching night for you. Can you tell us about it? Yes, we hugged each other and cried a lot. Oh, really? Army, yes. let me tell you something. Not right now, he's not right a, he's now. A humanitarian and one of the great talents. We know that. I'm sorry, we don't have time because right now, let's go on with the show. From New York. Gee, I love saying that. I think I'll say it again. From New York, it's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Late Night celebrates its one year anniversary with guest comedian Robert Klein and the godfather of soul, James Brown. And with on-the-scene commentary, Army Archid, the voice of Hollywood and friend to the stars. Also, a look at some of the year's new gift items, highlights of Dave's New York City tours, and stupid pet tricks, plus other marvelous moments from a year of wonderful shows. I mean it. They were really wonderful shows. And now, a man who is the meanest boss in the world. <laughs> Just kidding. He's really great. David Letterman. That's awfully darn nice of you folks. You know, uh, I have been to every lunar launch that NASA had. I've been to every Super Bowl. Uh, I've been to Woodstock twice. But ladies and gentlemen, I have never seen anything like this tonight. It's unbelievable, isn't it? And, and because you're such a wonderful audience, everyone in the studio tonight will receive a hot meal and a tattoo. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, tonight is, uh, what is this, our first year on the air. Now, I know a lot of people out there, a lot of skeptics in this country are saying, one year, big deal. All right. <laughs> Let me put it in perspective. If you measure this in dog years, we're right up there with happy days. You know, it's, it's a... Uh, not only is this an exciting night for, for us because of obvious reasons, but it's also, I guess this is no secret, it's uh, Gumby's birthday today. <laughs> and and uh, that, of course, is a legal holiday in New Jersey, so I'm... I'm... Oh, boy, 
We have a fine program for you folks. You seem to be in a wonderful mood, and I certainly appreciate the help, not only tonight, but every night of the year. Uh, on our program tonight, Mr. Robert Klein will be here. Uh, in addition to Mr. Robert Klein, the godfather of soul, James yeah! Brown. We're going to take a look at highlights of all of our touring of New York City over the past year. Also, the highlights of something we like to call, and so we do, <laughs> stupid pet tricks. Uh, sure. And we're going to have a visit from uh, Larry Bud Melman, if he's ever located. And uh, we'll be going back down onto the street with Army Archer, the voice of Hollywood and friend of the stars, this and much, much more. Please now say hello to our good old friend, Mr. Yeah. Paul Schaefer, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Hey, thank you very much. Getting older by the minute. You are too much. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me say this, though. I'm kind of excited about this. I was in the desert last week on our vacation. Of course, when an entertainer says the desert, he means, of course, Palm Springs. That's right. California. <laughs> I picked up, there's a guy out there named Mr. Maury Geyer. Now, I don't usually do plugs, but this guy has designed a shirt. This is called the Maury Geyer scalp. Look at it. This, he has done more for an entertainer's That's a beauty, wardrobe. Paul. Isn't it something now? It unbuttons. Because of the scallops, you can really unbutton it as... Good as like a, heavens! You know, a, a happening medallion underneath, you know? What he has done for an entertainer's wardrobe, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> and by the way, congratulations on you. Well, congratulations to you too, Paul Thank Schaefer, you. ladies and gentlemen, and the Maury Geyer shirt. Boy, that's... That's some work of art, that scallop shirt there. Scallop. Uh, you know, in the last 12 months, we have presented you, the viewers, with literally hundreds of new products introduced by hopeful manufacturers. They all sold well, but some of them went right through the roof. Why, they were more like hotcakes than new products. So fast did they sell. Uh, these now are fixtures in countless American homes. We thought we'd take another look at them again tonight. First of all, this item, I have one on my vanity at home in my dressing room. At last, bodybuilding meets ear care in an atmosphere of friendship and understanding. It's the new Jack LaLanne Q-tip dispenser. And boy, do we need it now. Jack LaLanne Q-tip dispenser. Easy to see why it's a multi-million dollar seller. Now this is exciting. Mock airplane windows for big fun on your next commercial flight. Just slip one of these over the real window and watch panic everywhere. Passerbys uh, will see the wing of the plane engulfed in flames. Stewardesses guaranteed to drop trays. A fun new gag. Yes, they get that right over there. Now, do you remember the good old days when gas station attendants were really polite and would fill your tank for $5? Well, it can still be that way when you turn on the new Hypno Gas Cap. Yes, in five seconds, your gasoline attendant will be in a trance and you'll hear things like, a dollar for 21 gallons? Why, thank you, sir. And let me get the inside of that windshield also, master. The new Hypno Gas Cap. Now, in Mexico, it's known as El Nob Grande. Here in the United States, we simply call it the giant phony doorknob, and it's a panic. Now, right here, ladies and gentlemen, this oversized doorknob is much larger than it ought to be. In fact, it's just plain big. <laughs> simply attach this to an ordinary door and then wait for the fireworks. Your friends will flip when they see how truly big a doorknob can be. This is the fourth time we've had the giant doorknob on the show. It hasn't worked any other time either. The giant doorknob. Well, little Sparky here may have a nasty case of rabies, but you know, when you're, when you're in a close shave or need one, he's still man's best friend. This, of course, is the Mad Dog Shaving Cream Dispenser. Oh my God, look what I've done to poor old Sparky. Ooh. Some sort of terrible surgical procedure here. Oh, oh my God, I th think we may have to put Sparky to sleep. What a terrible operation for the little fella to undergo. It's the rabid dog shaving cream dispenser. Yeah, we're off and running now, aren't we? From the people who brought you those cute little corn cob holders, here's a new way to eat lots and lots of ham. 
With these whimsical ham grips, you can polish off an entire canned ham without the embarrassment of greasy fingers. Just perfect for picnics and family gatherings. All right, next, uh, this is from the engineering geniuses at Sony. It's the Walkman Video Disc. It lets you enjoy a major motion picture release while you're walking to work. The Walkman Video Disc. And of course, you don't look like a jerk. Now, uh, each of us has been faced with the nightmare of trying to select a holiday chocolate without knowing what kind of filling is inside. Well, with this miniature core sample drill developed by Exxon, You'll know the exact composition of each center in seconds. Don't take chances. The next one you bite into might be pineapple. Let's see how this is. There you go, just like that. There you go. All right. Now, here's an ingenious device in the tradition of the back scratcher. It's called the front scratcher. This was developed, developed by the Marine Corps for inexperienced recruits. And finally, it's available for civilians. The front scratcher right there, that is. It's available for civilians now. Now, it goes without saying that uh, no one likes to find a pipe bomb in their home. I know I don't. But you can make that wait for the bomb squad a little less nerve-wracking with this clever pipe bomb decorator kit. Yes, fuzzy felt appliques will turn even the scariest explosive device into an adorable dachshund puppy. There you have the... Okay, and I believe we have time for just one more here. Well, this is the age-old problem, a pizza mistakenly ordered with toppings that you don't like. Well, the space-age solution, this high-speed pizza centrifuge. <laughs> just turn on the motor and unwanted anchovies or mushrooms fly off at twice the speed of sound. Let's see how it works. Switch on the pizza centrifuge and in a matter of moments, there they go. My, oh my, what fun we're having. We gotta go away. We'll be right back with highlights of our tours of New York City. Welcome back to the, uh, for those of you tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, this is the giant doorknob. It's, I think you'll have to agree with me that it's just plain big, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, my gosh. What a funny son of a... Huh? All right, now... Um, now, settle down, settle down. You know, we're all tired, but it's a good kind of tired. One of, <laughs> one of the things that has made this past year special for myself are the many trips and excursions we here at Late Night, that's the name of the program you're now watching, have made throughout this wonderful city of ours, New York. We've made a lot of people, I mean, we've... <laughs> Speak for yourself, Dave. We've met a lot of people, we've seen a lot of sights, and like I said before, now we're tired, but it's a good kind of tired, so come with me now as we relive some of those magical moments through the medical... In the last several years, much has been uh, said and written about Alan Alda, the TV star and the uh, film star, the motion picture director, writer, humanitarian, champion of minority causes, but surprisingly enough, we know very little about Alan Alda, a guy who likes Chinese food. And that's why we're here at the Hunan Park restaurant. What kind of food does he enjoy? He likes stream beans, and he likes um, cold noodle with a sesame sauce, fried dumpling. Most uh, food we have, he likes very much. Well, it's no secret that the newest pastime sweeping this country in 1982 is uh, somebody names a celebrity, somebody else tries to guess what kind of business machine or typewriter he or she uses. Walter Cronkite, I'm, I'm just guessing here, a manual? I would assume so. I'm not really familiar with his particular machine. Okay, this is Melba Moore, and uh, I guess from this photograph, it looks like she's just ready to type right there, huh? Yes, yeah, she does. You never really find out much about celebrities and their preference in footwear. Well, let's start with Leonard Bernstein. He likes a little high heel, 
uh, for the simple reason that he wants a little height on stage. He's a pretty short man. Celebrities and their dry cleaning. Special problems, how do they handle it? That's why we're here at the DuPont Dry Cleaners. Now, this was a pretty exciting Paul Newman. That... He don't come in here, but the two ladies that are with him do. They're two... Janet and Louise Arters. Yeah, and they appeared in a film with him, and they bring in quite a bit of cleaning also. Frank, uh, what can you tell us about celebrities and their auto body repairs? Let's, uh, I guess, just start with this gentleman here, Mr. Frank Sinatra. What kind of work has he had done here? Uh, Mr. Frank Sinatra, I've never met in person. I have corresponded by mail, and uh, I have received... Uh, what photographs and communications with Emil from uh, his office. Uh, you never actually worked on Frank's car? As far as I know, no. There are uh, celebrity restaurants in town, like the uh, burger joint. What about Donnie Most? What can you tell me about his burger order? Remember what he had? I don't remember the names, you know. Okay. Uh, do you, do you, remember, you know Mason Reese, though. He still comes in, right? I told you I don't remember the names. I know you've photos of uh, our, our president, Ronald Reagan. Has he ever been in here? No. Uh, he hasn't been in here yet. Frederick Seldman, better known as the Mattress King. Is there a Mattress Queen? Yes, there is. There are also two princes. Lumber Boys, very popular uh, Saturday morning kids program. Uh, Henry, you're uh, one of the uh, Lumber Boys. What's the funniest thing that's happened to you since you've been uh, with the company? Last week, my boss used that high-low to take off some particle board off that same identical truck, and the particle board came off into the street. My boss went up in the air and came down. <laughs> is, is he still alive? Oh, yeah, he's still alive. We had a little hemorrhoid problem, but he made it all right. Yeah. And uh, you're, so you're proud to be one of these uh, lumber boys? No comment. Okay, Richard, uh, tell us about this one. The fabulous suction will lift bowling ball. There it is. Pick it up. Pick it up. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Excuse me, sir. Uh, are you here to see the world's largest humidor? Uh, largest what? World's largest humidor. Humidor. Have you ever seen the world's largest humidor? No, I haven't. Any interest in that? None whatsoever. So this was the world's largest humidor. Temperature is always here at an even level between 68 and 70. Never goes anything below and never goes above. Cigars can last in here, I would say roughly maybe 40, 50 years. It would also be a good climate for a vacation. George, uh, we have here the home salad bar. We process them in a vinegar salt solution until there's no more live material in it. It has become already a, an inert object. Then you add on the flavor and you slice it. And so all of these things are actually inert objects to right. which flavor has right. been added. Yeah, I put it beautifully. How many donuts a day should a person eat? Uh, about uh, 150 dozen a day. And is there a, a best, a better time of the day to eat, eat a donut? When is when's the best time? The best time is uh, Wednesday and Friday. Wednesday and Friday. Happy's parking lot. The happiest parking lot in town. You, you happy? No, I'm Eddie. If you're uh, Eddie and this is Happy's parking lot, where is Happy? Happy's about six feet under. He died about ten years ago. The name of the store is Just Bulbs. And that's exactly what we sell, just bulbs. Okay, so besides bulbs, what do you have here? Nothing. How about shades? Could you get shades here? No, we are just bulbs. If you want shades, maybe go in a place called Just Shades. We sell nothing but this what, uh, what is the name of the store? Just Shades. And uh, what, what can you get in here? What can you get in here? All the shades. Mm -hmm. That's why we sell. That's why our name is Just Shades. But seriously, what, what can you get besides shades here? Uh, how much pizza do you think people ought to eat uh, in the course of a week? A week? And, uh, 600. 600 pies a week? Yeah. Now a chance to meet a man who is just as famous in this country as he is, of course, in the Orient. Your friend and mine, Mr. Egg Roll. What's a typical day like for Mr. Egg Roll? Thursday, Friday, like paydays. And uh, shopping days, like uh, holidays, Easter, Christmas day. Okay, well, good luck to you and uh, Mrs. Egg Roll and uh, the young Egg Roll children, and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hold on to your
your seats, ladies and gentlemen. The many of the people you just met will be here tonight to help us celebrate our anniversary. No pictures, please. We'll be right back, folks. Some of the members of New York celebrated royal families who've been on the show are now arriving. Well, here's Mr. Mo Greengrass, the Sturgeon King, and his lovely wife, Shirley, the Sturgeon Queen. Good evening. Good to see you here tonight. And here's Mr. Frederick Seldman, the Mattress King. How are you, Fred? Nice to see you. Excuse me, Fred. I mean, your, your royal highness. But how do you feel about the big anniversary party tonight? I think it's wonderful. It's a great show, and I'm glad I'm here. Can you tell us, having been on the show, how it affected your life? It certainly did. We had calls from all over the country telling me that they enjoyed the show and seeing me on it. Great. And now, back to you, David. Yeah. You get the feeling something dangerous is going to happen down there, don't you? Uh, coming up in this next half hour, Mr. Robert Klein will be here and we'll be looking at some memorable moments from Stupid Pet Tricks. Also, the godfather of soul, James Brown, and more of this scintillating on-the-scene commentary from Army Archer, co-host of the People's Choice Awards, the voice of Hollywood, and friend of the stars. No point in going to sleep tonight. We'll be right back. Yeah! Hello, Julie Andrews. This is Larry Melman. Buddy, I'm calling you because we never received an RSVP for the anniversary party. It means respond, see who play. We think you should come. There'll be lots of guys at the party, also all you can eat. Well, okay, fine. There'll just be more food for us. That's it, she's finished. <laughs> Show, ladies and gentlemen, now uh, plenty of stuff coming on uh, later tonight. Uh, a chat with Larry Bud Melman, uh, Stupid Petricks, James Brown, and my first guest who's been with us many times over the past year, a very good friend. Uh, he'll be appearing in concert on February 7th at the Saddle Rock in San Jose, California. Please give him a warm welcome, Mr. Robert Klein. Thank you very much for being here. You, you always you. come on a, uh, a festive evening, don't you? Well, uh, it seems that uh, I do. And usually an animal in, in, in attendance, as there is tonight. Yeah. There's always a poodle in the halls of NBC <laughs> during the Letterman show, walking on its hind legs with wearing jeans. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm very excited about the anniversary. I'm happy for the success of the show. So my mother always taught me to bring something. <laughs> And That's very thoughtful. And there's a couple of hamatash, and you could always use milk. You know, you never. <laughs> <laughs> you may run out. Well, that's you know? nice. It's a quarter milk. A lot of people don't like cream with their coffee. No, that's on. great. Did you, can we open yeah. this or just save it? No, we'll save it. All right, you know, I'll put it over here. That's it's a nice. nice. There's a prune Danish in there that gets caught in your teeth, and you have to search for it. This is interesting. The pressure is is kind of on James Brown to come up with something now, isn't there? In the, in the way of a gift. Uh, the last, the last he may not be bringing something from the bakery. We're different <laughs> traditions, you know. <laughs> he will bring his talent. He's a lovely man, yeah. too. Uh, and he still has a voice, actually, after yeah. that. You know, you do that for a living. You, it's tough. you talk like Andy Devine quicker than you can say Jack Robinson. It's uh -huh. very exciting. Uh, the last time you were here, Robert, you were a little depressed. Remember that? This I was. was uh, I actually showed. I saw the tape later. I was a little depressed. And you want to tell the folks why? Or? Well, well, I was talking about my wife was going away for four months to Europe to sing in the opera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to Paris a couple of times and saw... I mean, there's no toilet paper backstage at the Paris Opera. Can you possibly believe that? I saw these huge $5,000 a night international stars walking around with toilet paper under their arm. I said, 
This is the chintziest. I mean, I have a couple of holiday intels I'd like to give back as soon as, as soon as there's an amnesty, you know. But I mean, from from my early days. But stealing toilet paper, I found no. They're bringing toilet paper because there is none. Oh, I see. They it's a company policy. Why I brought that up first, I think it, it symbolizes the disadvantages of American artists abroad. In any case, I was left alone. Brenda came home for a very brief moment before going on to San Diego to do Henry VIII. And one of the disadvantages when you're away from your spouse of 10 years for a long time is I went to go to sleep. She went to sleep first. She was exhausted coming from Europe. I went into my own bed. She went, ah, ah, concierge, poliziano. <laughs> she wasn't used to anyone else yeah. in the bedroom. Well, yeah, that's, well, I guess, a good sign, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> Come to think of it. <laughs> Very good sign, but uh, it is one of the disadvantages. I stayed up a little while longer, and I didn't, even though she was sleeping, I said, coming in, husband, <laughs> making an appearance. How do, you, uh, how do you get along uh, in uh, metropolitan Paris? You're pretty well versed in uh, transportation, public transportation, no, subways, cabs, so forth? It's very tough. Uh, got lost in the metro and the, the subway, you know. And I was begging for a nice Frenchman who might remember D-Day and help a couple of Yanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, I heard a blues singer. Uh, I couldn't find anyone who spoke English. We were totally lost in the belly of Paris there. And I heard, got my bloom on my shoulder, no more. You know, Blind Levin Jefferson. I run over, and it's a young guy. Uh, and he's playing. I put a buck in his, uh, or a few francs in his case there. I said, can you tell us where to go? He goes, okay. He's a Frenchman. You know, he, he memorized all the blues stuff by, uh, by rote. He, he didn't know how to go. No, I mean, all kinds of... Uh, things about being involved abroad when you are reduced to a child, really. Money becomes something you don't know. You have to take time to memorize. Medium size queen's head, a large <laughs> castle, you know. <laughs> and uh, paid $15 for a bar of soap. That, that's where the cab ride in from the airport uh, is some like 160, whatever the currency is, would be that's francs, and you're busily uh, checking to see if you can cover that. Well, price. I had a nice man in Paris. He took me to the, uh, from the Charles de Gaulle airport to uh, the central city by way of Ogden, Utah. <laughs> you know, nice guy. How many times have you been here on this uh, extravaganza in the past? Uh, I think my appearances this year were four. You know, you think about your anniversary. This is my fifth, in other words. Mm -hmm. How many children were conceived during the David Letterman show in the past year? <laughs> well, in the studio audience alone, I know uh, probably a couple of dozen at least happened. Um, How you know? How many people are scratching themselves, brushing their teeth? How many people had, I had arguments? How many people knew the marriage was over during the David Letterman Ooh. show? You know, or knew good things. My television in, in the house when I was a kid was always on in the evening hours. And I remember certain emotional uh, traumas by, by what was on. My parents had this terrible fight when I was 11. And they, they made an appearance on the show, too. That's right. They just the had their Robert 50th anniversary. Uh, I thought, uh-oh, it's over. They had a terrible fight. And I remember I've Got a Secret was on. And the woman's secret was she had 21 children. And afterwards, it gave her a washer. <laughs> but how many... You know what else I missed? You weren't at the Super Bowl on the sidelines there. All the NBC stars were there. That's I right. All the NBC stars were there. <laughs> That's right. David, I was furious at it. After a nice... A dignified Xerox commercial that costs five billion dollars mm -hmm. and, and Xerox, right, right. and you got the A team wants you. We don't want no stupid, you know. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I mean, it's a good image for America too. I think the combination of he and Richard Simmons is just what you want your children to grow up to. You know? There ought to be a police team, possibly, but we have some highlights from the year, don't we? Well, take a look at the screen there. Robert, tell us. That was oh, my first your dog. One. There's Moisha, my dog in the back there. This is your very first one, right? And I wore my overcoat. And then Moisha couldn't come, so I brought a leash with no dog in it. Uh -huh. And the joke worked better this time than <laughs> yeah, then. It did, didn't it, somehow? Then there was my bathrobe. You see, I live so close by, as you know. That's right. That I came in my bathrobe. This was the night of the... Uh... A marching band. And I brought, I, uh, and I usually have milk and cookies before I go to sleep. You gave me milk and cookies. They were Lorna Dunes, however. Uh -huh. And they got caught. I had a search. So the law, you know, I spent. Well, this is well, nice. I always was dignified. One thing I was on the show was dignified. That's right. You know, I never made faces or anything special. I don't know why these were selected, but. 
<laughs> They're out of context. <laughs> there was a hygiene thing, Dr. Frank Field, e ear care. Uh -huh. you know, That's it? right. Came on. There's one. I jumped. I bought a Toyota or something. I don't know. I jumped up. And... What's this now? I had to bring my own chair. Do you remember that night? That's right. Something happened. Our uh, chair uh, was... Well, uh... the captain was on. That was my bar mitzvah picture, which yeah. we had on. The highlights of the bar mitzvah were the jello. Yep. A chopped liver a mold liver, with little, a, uh, the form little, of a chicken. Sparrows and or... the herring ferris wheel, my favorite. Oh, yeah. yeah. You remember that one? That was the highlight of the year. And smoking a cigar and then ran away from my father. That was the dots at the end of my home movies, that most of them were dots, you know. Uh, that was when I was talking about ants and how they paint you, your You cheek. have something, you're always touching your face, aren't you? Oh, a band cam. That's right, the marching band Do you band remember that time? In. We were in yeah. the middle of talking. Yeah, yeah. And they surprised David and myself by having a marching band come through. And the joke worked. Not too well, but it was taking a chance. That's right, and we, we have... You know, uh, one thing I must say, the David Letterman show takes a chance. Yeah. Smacked him right in the face. <laughs> he had hit me, and then I smacked this is really, David this, oh, right this is, Oh, here we are again, yeah. We're actually live. Yeah, we certainly do... Uh, no, but I had a... You know I had a wonderful time, and you're a real... Uh, you know how to do this extremely well, and I try to help you as much as I can. You're always welcome to help. In and fact, that, that goes for anyone in America who thinks they can help. Just stop on by. You're going to be uh, going to San Jose and then uh, uh, other interesting uh, venues? Uh, lots of colleges, and I'll be around. Well, I appreciate I'm your... I'm going to go to the uh, party now. Oh, yeah. I was always hoping to leave early, like Bob Hope, you know? But I have to wait till I'm older. You know? Okay. Uh, please stick around for the party, and thank you for all your help over the past year. Mr. Robert Klein, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Klein. Uh, we'll be back with uh, Stupid Pet Tricks right after this. Thank you very much, brother. stuff to do tonight, uh, among which stupid pet tricks, Mr. James Brown will be here. Uh, a visit, a chat, a rare insights to Larry Bud Melman will be uh, coming up. <laughs> also, more from Army Archard, the voice of Hollywood and the friend of the stars, and a good friend of ours, Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. Paul, have a seat, if you will. Thank you. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but... Oh, you're not interrupting. Oh, well, thank you. I just came over to kind of embarrass... That's a fine shirt, by Thank the way. you so much. Have you seen the scalps, by the way, and the fact that you can really unbutton... What was the name of the man who invented this? This is the Maury Geyer yeah. scallop shirt. Uh -huh. He did a... some work on the linear accelerator also, didn't he? And then <laughs> went on to scalloping shirts. I didn't know about that. <laughs> but I am here for some very important business. You know, <laughs> with all the marvelous stars and the wild, nutty animals that you have on this show, it's easy to forget this fella sitting right here. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is without this guy, this show would be called Late Night With. You know what I mean? Am I right? Not a bad idea. Am I right? Anyway, in honor of this cat right here, I have put together a kind of a little clip thing, and when you see it, I think you'll know why the industry calls this man right here a marvelous, marvelous kind of individual. <laughs> Dave, this one is for you. This one is for you. Uh, interesting article in today's Wall Street Journal. Profiling the chairman of the board of America's top 25 industries. And some fascinating information. For example, out of that 25, only two of these gentlemen are Elvis impression impersonators. <laughs> I had, I had something I wanted to tell you, I think. Have I covered everything? I just got here, didn't I? I'm supposed to be over there, aren't I? Oh, my. Hey, it's working with you, really. Oh, I see how this is supposed to work. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Well, I, no, nothing's the matter with me. Uh, well, maybe there is, but I don't think we have those. We, we, of course, we may, you know, it's quite possible. <laughs> Do you want me to ask you a few questions? No. <laughs> We give it also a thumbs up based on. Now oh, this is. I'm oh. sorry, a thumbs down. Based on Rogers. No jeans. Jeans. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bag o bees. 
Over 600 mixed bumble and honeybees in a sting-proof sack. This for you here. Let me get this for you here. Let me... Did I show you the bacteria bags? The dancer uh, is Adora Duncan. This is a pop-up book of her life story. Just open this. Okay. No, wait a minute. I didn't... I didn't... It... it uh, wait a minute. Let me pretend you didn't see that. The bag obese. All right, apparently the bag of bees are sleeping a little late tonight. Let's move on to the next item while we try and correct that problem. Okay, here is the edible stationery. <laughs> Could be a two-parter, folks. <laughs> the bag of bees. Apparently, this is not the kind of thing designed to be shown on American TVs. Yeah, it's, it, uh, uh, but it's good that it doesn't, doesn't bother you that people are uh, including your name. I mean, it's a very, uh, it's a, you know. <laughs> yeah. All day long, I thought, well, tonight I got one that'll work, and then my, my mouth exploded. What kind of jobs were you, were you uh, like secretarial work, I'm guessing, is out. That's, a, that's not, you know. I, I just, just a joke. I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Now you See, that's why I'm squeezing his ball. Said, so in case he get to telling them corny jokes, I'm going to squeeze his ball. If I squeeze the ball too many times, if, I, if you see me squeeze the ball over 10 times, that means cut the jokes. I don't square it's about six times already. Oh, shit. Sure. So, six. The pop-up book version makes certain scenes even more memorable. Oh, darn it. See, it's, it's doing this, uh, I have no control over it. It's got a mind of its own, for heaven's sakes. It can't be stopped. Run for your lives. Nutty Marvelous. Here's a new something, here's a new something, Dave. You're fabulous. I gotta get out of here. Over there. I'm starting to believe my own shirt. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Al Schaefer is starting to believe his own shirt, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Paul. You know, um... Uh, since this program first went on the air way back in the late 50s, occasionally we've been bringing you stupid pet tricks. Tonight we would like to recreate some magic moments from the past year's assortment thereof. Ladies and gentlemen, our first pet trick participant tonight, Sherry Gross and her, and her rabbit Thumper. <laughs> Sherry and Thumper, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Sherry, how are you? Nice to, nice to see you again. And this, of course, is the original Thumper. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of us who may not remember what Thumper will do, what will Thumper do? She'll play dead and then ride a skateboard. Thumper will play dead and ride a skateboard. Okay, uh, anything, uh, are there any drugs involved with this? No. Okay, uh, what do you need to do, Sherry? Just sit down. Oh, you want me to sit down? Oh, you sit no. down. Okay. Sherry and Thumper, ladies and gentlemen. God, she's strangling that rabbit! <laughs> Kidding. Oh, uh, <laughs> Now, what exactly does that do? Just sort of relax the uh, Thumper? Yeah, just, just pet her stomach. Uh-huh. Relax. Yeah, she's... Oh, that's cute. <laughs> okay, so that was, that was Thumper playing dead. And also now, part two. She'll ride skateboard. Of this amazing exhibition. All right, she'll be riding the skateboard. Thumper on the skateboard. Is he coming back? Whoa! There he is. Very nice. Thank you very much, Sherry. Nice to see you again. Thank you very much. Sherry Gross and Thumper the Rabbit. Uh, Diane Cassover and her dog Tango, ladies and gentlemen. Diane. Hi, Diane. How are you? Nice to see you again, Diane. And uh, this is your dog, Tango. 
And uh, you were on uh, last February, yes. a year ago, sure. Now, what will the tango do for us? Last year, he played one note on the piano. Now, this year, in honor of your first anniversary, he's going to play two notes. Well, you've had your hands full, then, ever since <laughs> the, last, the last year. All right, uh, Diane, go right ahead. And uh, this will be tango, two notes on the piano, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I don't think they heard it. Do it again, tango. A little louder. Wow, this is getting more and more spectacular. That's amazing, Diane, and I guess next year we can look forward to, what do you think, three? Well, he can jump over my leg. Oh, she's going to jump? Oh, now that's impressive also. Come on, one more time. Oh, I missed my leg. Yeah, that's very nice. Thank you very much, Diane. Diane and Tango, nice to see you again. Diane and Tango. Uh, Carolyn Baker and her dog, Rocky, ladies and gentlemen. Carolyn Baker and Rocky. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. How are you? Hi, how are you? Pleasure to see you again. Yes, sir. It's Rocky, Rocky all right, is it? Yes, Rocky has a present for you. Whoa! Rocky, drop it. Drop, drop it. it. He makes Thank that... You. He's just kidding, though, with that... Happy that. anniversary. Oh, oh, nothing I like better than a little dog saliva. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very... Thank you, Rocky. Rocky, come well, here. Put, also has a message. I'll just put this over here. <laughs> Rocky is kind of a high-spirited dog, isn't he? Yeah, a little bit. He He's has a, a message to you, as says, you can I, see. That's very sweet. He's got his T-shirt on there. Uh, dogs love wearing T-shirts, don't they? <laughs> How you doing, Rocky? Okay, now, what will Rocky do for us again, Carolyn? Rocky's going to jump for his ring, <laughs> pull on it, and then he's going to swing from it. Oh, he's going to swing from the mm -hmm. ring. As I recall, this is spectacular, isn't it? Well, it takes a lot of space. To... Yeah. Look at if this you... guy. Rocky? Carolyn, thank, thank you. you very much. Rocky, Whoa, Rocky. Rocky and Carolyn. Are you ready? Rock! Rocky, come here! Rocky! Let's go! Jump! Oh, you can do that. Come on, Rocky, jump! One more time, Rocky. Rocky. Come on! That's, that's very nice. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Rocky and uh, Carolyn Baker. Thank you, uh, Carolyn. Nice to see you and Rocky again. Okay. And next we have uh, Mary Casian and her dog, uh, Brother Benjamin, ladies and gentlemen. Mary Casian. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you. <laughs> okay. Good heavens, uh, Brother Benjamin. Well, I'll be darned. Now, uh, Mary, uh... <laughs> oh, boy. How old is your son, Mary? Uh, now, uh, in addition to that, uh, Benjamin will, I guess, go up the stairs? Okay. Nice to see you again, Mary. Thank you for bringing your dog, Brother Benjamin, again. Bye-bye. Not -bye. Benji. Benji. Okay. Thank you very much. Brother Benji. Ah, uh, there again, through the miracle of instant replay. Now, do, do we have time to bring... Uh, okay, we'll try and get to that perhaps later in the show or maybe next year. Uh, we got to go away for a commercial. James Brown will be here right after you. Take a look at that. A lot more stars are arriving. And now from the burger joint, a man who has made burgers for Donnie Most and Eric Estrada, Mr. Big Nick Imiriaves. Good to see you. And from the cheerful cleaners, it's Bernie Lazar, the cheerful cleaner. 
Oh, of course, these two men who frequently serve Chinese food to Alan Alda. We'd like to say hello first from the Hunan Park and the Hunan Balcony. Can we say hello to you both, David? And Paul? I'm Paul. You're Paul. You're David. Now, you know, we understand that uh, Alan Alda has been a lot. Has he been in to see you lately? Yes, last year, December. Last year in December. And is he still eating that same uh, string bean and noodle? Yes. Yes. yes sir. Has, he's not in anything new these days, is he? Yes. He is. Okay. Well, thanks again for being here. And now, let's see who's arriving now. Oh, of course, the man who has done auto body work for Cliff Gorman, Ava Gabor, and Jack Carter, Mr. Frank Dianello. Frank, don't go away. Don't go away. We understand that you met Connie Stevens. Would you like to tell us how that came about? Well, my wife and I were traveling across the country into Mexico with my family and children in the car, and we stopped off at the Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas, and we saw Connie Stevens, and we requested an audience with her, and she was gracious enough to give it to us. Well, we're glad we have an audience with you tonight, and now, back to you, David. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the most memorable highlights of the past year on this program was the first appearance of my next guest. He showed that uh, night. Uh, he, show, he showed that night why people say he has the greatest live act in show business. Welcome, please, ladies and gentlemen, James Brown. Yeah! You ever get hurt when you're performing? Yes. Yeah? I was in Akron, Ohio, and I jumped off the stage there, and, uh, and um, I had to kind of judge where I was going to land, I thought, you know. Uh -huh. I guess it kind of wind up like the satellite. I kept landing in different pieces, you know. Yeah. <laughs> My leg went one way, and the other leg went another place, and I, I stayed there for about five or ten minutes. And, Fellas rushed me back up, you know, and I had to smile, but uh, <laughs> I was in pain. David, I would like to say something now. Sure. The last time I was here, I had a lot of work done on my mouth, dentist-wise, and I... Not on the show, though. People <laughs> misunderstand it. Before I got here, right, uh -huh. I 
was in a lot of pain. Really? And I, I couldn't believe the inspiration and the, and the motivation from the audience, you know. Oh, yeah, that was a great that night. Was a, it was a fantastic yeah. show. Well, you were terrific. That's why they were well, terrific. I just, I just kind of got in. You know. Uh, now, you, you played some sports, uh, didn't you? Some yes. semi-pro ball? Yes. Uh, uh, baseball. Yeah. Yes. And um, I fought. You fought? Uh, yes, yes. Now, did, did, do you think you had a chance at going on to uh, high minors, as they say, or maybe Major League Baseball? Baseball, I could have made it easy. Boxing, I was kind of in there already, but um, the fella got into me a little heavier than I expected, you know? Yeah, yeah. And once I really got uh, the whoop of what could really happen, I said, I think I better sing. Yeah. Uh, now, tell me about your baseball days. Where did those begin? Uh, that was in Georgia and um, North Carolina. I played baseball. But I was a junior delinquent when I played baseball. And uh, when I got out of uh, the institution, uh, I had a chance to go to a uh, farm team for Chicago. And um, I had to deal with uh, entertainment. I had to stay in the area so I couldn't go. So, yeah, so my next choice was to, to survive. And what was the institution that you uh, left? Well, um, they let me go. Uh, well, no, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in uh, uh, Tacoa, Georgia. Uh, it was a juvenile institution for boys. And um, it, it, it did a lot for my life because it, I had only one direction to go, either right or stay there. So I straightened up and uh, being young, you know, I got all the, get rid of all the key advices, and, and I made a good thing out of it. And thank God, uh, I had a lot of help. Okay. You're going to sing again for us, aren't you? If you let me. Oh, we'll be happy to have you. Uh, we'll be right back. James Brown will sing another song uh, after this commercial. Thank you. Hello, George Miller. This is Larry Melman. Dave wants to know why you aren't at his anniversary show. Robert Klein is here. Well, I think he's funny. I've got an in at the Comedy Canoe. I could get you work there. Okay, George, suit yourself. But I think you're making a big mistake by not coming. Sip. You know, this past year has been very special for me for many reasons, and certainly not the least of which uh, was the fact that a special person came into the lives of late-night viewers. I'm talking about a multi-talented individual whose personal sense of style and acute sense of business have helped make Late Night a television show that has seen four nights a week at 12.30 in most markets and sometimes on Friday. A driving force in the American theater. Welcome, please, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bud Melman. Surely have come a long way, haven't we? That's right, David. Yeah. Uh, any highlights you'd like to mention at this time? Oh, just the Jack LaLanne special. Oh, that's right. You, yeah. you got to interview Jack LaLanne. I know as a boy, he was kind of an idol for you, yes, wasn't he? Yeah. Exactly. That must have been very exciting. Oh, it was. Yeah. Uh, you know what we have here, uh, Larry? I don't know if you're aware of this. We have some, speaking of highlights, we have some of those assembled on a reel of videotape oh. that we'd like to show not Thank only you, the studio audience, but also... North America. So let's take a look at that now, ladies and gentlemen. Larry Bud Melman in action over the past 365 days. Great exercise, Dick. Get rid of your pot. Give me your pot. You get the other side of your pot. I just said, get your pot. Here's something else you might want to do. Take along an ordinary water pistol, which I have right here. Fill it full of ink and just maybe randomly shoot a full. <laughs> hey, pal, you just ruined a 45 designer shirt. <laughs> you mean that shirt's also a 45? So is this. Uh... I don't care. It's one of a kind. I know. This is. You mean? <laughs> Why you uh... Tired? No problem. I bought some nose doughs. <laughs> there you go. Actually, that means it's like no doughs, isn't no it? Dough. Yeah, pretty much. 
<laughs> Is it too late to change my order to steak tartare? And Dan, by the way, I like it rare. Uh, the hell was that? There you have it, kids. Ride Melman buses and meet my son. That's right, Dad. Oh, screw that. Here is Larry Bud Melman, president of Melman Productions and Melman Bus Lines, to read the traditional night before Christmas. So snuggle up to the TV and listen along, won't you? Oh, God. It was, a night, it was a night before Christmas. Not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. Oh. Now I gotta read Spanish. Te cupo a vez boom. Oh. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And, oh, God. More pudding, more tatter tots, more blueberry waffles, another chicken, fried steak, and two more double tequilas. Tatter tots. <laughs> yes, sir. Where was that son of a when I needed him? Okay, here we go. Now there are times when a punch in the mouth becomes unavoidable. That's why you'll want to wear this brand new safety, brand new foolproof safety device. I still think you're a big bad boo. Why you, I oughta. This has been a Melman production. for all your help. Uh, let's go back down on the street with Army Archer, the voice of Hollywood and the friend of the stars. I've never seen such an array of stars. Have you, David? Now we have arriving some of your favorites, Barbara and Seymour Teicher of Ben's Babyland. And I see coming up next, John Betancourt of Lumberland. How are you, John? And of course, a lady who really lights up any function, Judy Brooks of Just Bulbs. And of course, we remember our dear Winnie Becker from Just Shades. And the man responsible for bringing miniature okra to the American dinner table, Mr. George Silver. Good to see you again, George. And now, I tell you, it has been a night to remember. Congratulations, happy anniversary, and back to you, Dave. Uh, thank you very much, Army. Uh, we'll be right back with James Brown, folks. Gentlemen, once again, James Brown.
Uh, let me, let me uh, first of all, thank everybody who helped out on tonight's program. Of course, Mr. Army Archer, the voice of Hollywood and the friend of the stars. We want to thank him for his help. Our good friend, Mr. Robert Klein. Robert, good luck to you. Nice to see you. Uh, also, James Brown. James, thank you very much. Nice job. And, of course, the band. Uh, you want to introduce the guys quickly? Sinclair, Holly. Jason and Mr. Paul Schaefer. Paul Schaefer, Hiram Bullock, Steve Jordan, and Will Lee. Uh, uh, also, everybody back here, uh, thank you very much for your help in appearing on the show uh, for the past year. We enjoyed having you as part of this production, and, uh, and I'm happy you could be here tonight. To, uh, and our studio audience, my thanks to you folks in the studio audience, and of course, my thanks to our production staff. What a fine job for helping us out for the first year. Uh, we got to go, ladies and gentlemen, or we'll be beaten senseless, and perhaps anyway. <laughs> Uh, Richard Belzer will be here on Monday, and also Henry Thomas plus Garrison Keeler. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Good night.